All right, hello everybody, and welcome to Noita, Alias here. Today, I'm going to do something a little different from what I normally do. This is going to be not a, like a VOD edit, or a, uh, like a heavily edited, edited YouTube video tutorial sort of thing. It's just going to be me playing Noita, but with a heavy focus on teaching various aspects of the game, and, and uh, an even heavier focus on specifically wand building. So yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to play the game how I normally would, and uh, I'm going to go over every single decision that I make, uh, starting off very basically with uh, like what wands I'm, I'm choosing and why, uh, and uh, going into some of the more minute details of, you know, various tech of how I can really min-max a level and uh, get the most out of various things. So, yeah, hopefully that interests you all. And uh, like I said, this is going to be minimal editing, so that way I can output these a little bit more regularly than uh, some of my other content. Because uh, it's one of those things where editing takes a lot of time, especially when I'm also streaming full-time and all that sort of thing. It all adds up. So, uh, if I can just play like an hour or two long run, and uh, get nice and strong, then uh, show that off. I, th I think that that would be helpful to some people. So yeah. Um, it, you saw me snap pick up this wand here. Obviously, I've got empty slots. This is a no-shuffle wand, and it's got a 0.83 recharge time and a 0.23 cast delay, which is pretty good overall. Um, note that I started with unstable crystals, so one of the options that I had... Uh, I, I didn't check early enough, but uh, one of the options that I had is I could have passive skilled everything on this floor and uh, gotten myself a lot of extra money, as well as the ability to uh, get a pacifist chest. Um, it, that's okay that I didn't. It really doesn't make that big of a difference unless you're doing like some sort of speed run or challenge run. And we're not. We're, we're just playing the game normally. Uh, so th this is one of the, the weird decisions you have to make in this game. Is sacrificing health for gold. Uh, health in this game is uh, a resource, and uh, I would recommend spending it from time to time. I'm gonna grab this because looks like it, it had popped. So something had hit it, and uh, now it's like a mixed potion. But it looks like it's not too bad. Anyway, health is a resource. You should probably spend it. Um, obviously, ideally, you, you don't want to get hit at all, but. Um, Sacrificing a little bit of HP for some form of value is a, a great way of thinking about your uh, your choices. Like, is it worth taking 40 damage for 10 gold? No. Is it worth taking 2 damage for 10 gold? Probably. Um, constant, so, the, I've got a difficult choice to make here. We've got limited item slots, and I've got some really good potions. I really like Unstable Teleportatium. It can come in handy in a lot of different ways. Invisiblium is incredibly powerful. It can, like, just give you a free level or two. And concentrated mana is pretty good, too. We're going to bring a little bit of that with us, and uh, that way I can use it to melt steel in the, the future levels. I'm not sure if I'll end up using it too extensively. The The big problem with concentrated mana is that it can often... Um, what's What's the word? It can mix with water plus toxic sludge and make it so the toxic sludge persists, which is a little annoying. That's the only, that's really the only downside of concentrated mana for the most part. Uh, also, it can eat gold, which is a little annoying. But other than that, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, for, for this first floor, a lot of people uh, end up asking the same question. That question is, what, what amount of gold should I leave floor one with? And uh, the answer is, you know, what, whatever you feel comfortable with. You don't really need any gold, but I personally would recommend, like, a minimum of 400. And, uh, you know, you, you could just full clear the floor, which tends to add up to around 1,200 gold. You don't need to do that every time. I normally leave at around 800. So we've still got empty wand slots, so we're going to still be picking up wands without thinking. You don't need to think about what the, the wand... Uh, does necessarily in this first floor. You should be able to clear the first floor with uh, your, your basic wand. And if you can't, then just keep on playing the game. Eventually you'll you'll just be able to dodge the majority of the damage. Note that those guys have uh, a shotgun. He's, he see have a 27 damage reach. 
And th that is generally the number that I like to leave the first floor on. If I take a lot of damage on the first floor, that, I that is when I decide to leave most of the time. So if you do find yourself taking a bunch of damage on this first floor, you know, keep that number in mind. Um, one thing to note about our current setup is our digging is fairly weak. Okay, so we've got a wand up here. Um, these guys can be worth a lot of extra money if you trick kill them. I'm not really too interested in doing that currently because, uh, you know, it, y you'll see that money is really not much of an issue. Okay, so we don't have anything under there. Go ahead and stick this in the ceiling. If we get a little close, bump our head toward it. Oh, let's here. Let, let's use some ambrosia. This is a great example of when ambrosia is great. You can just abuse that to, to get through a, a ceiling pretty easily. So now we've got a no shuffle wand. Um, so arrow has some pretty good uses. You can see that it's got a global minus 20 spread on it, which means that I can use it for spread reduction. This wand is the exact same identical wand as this rain cloud wand, and I don't really put too much stock in rain cloud. However, digging blast is amazing because it reduces recharge time, and uh, it, it doesn't actually deal any damage to enemies. That drill damage is a lie. Um, but it, it's digging, which is great. Uh, unlimited digging is incredibly high value, and if I had to recommend, like, a, a set of wands to have for every single run, I would recommend having some sort of movement wand, some sort of damage wand, and some sort of digging wand. So, as of current, our digging wand is kind of covered, which is really, really nice. Um, now, the, the movement wand is a ways away still. We don't have anything for that. I generally tend to look for a teleport or some form of recoil. Either one of those does pretty well for us. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the amount of gold we've got at this point. This has been a pretty successful first floor. Another thing to note is that um, removing that other no shuffle wand from my uh, inventory means that I've only got one option um, to, to choose from. You see how there's four candles here? That means there's a pretty good chance that my player ghost is kicking around. Three or four candles means that the game is trying to spawn a ghost and uh, the player ghost will start spawning in the world after your bone folder fills up a certain amount. And uh, yeah, it can be pretty dangerous because they, they can have any wand that you've had previously. So the better you get at the game, the more dangerous the wands will be more often than not. Especially since you might be creating something that, where you're explosive immune and using explosions, that sort of thing. Uh, these frogs are really dangerous. I wouldn't really recommend spending too much time in this biome to the far left it doesn't really have too much value outside of the dark cave and um it, it does have like a lot of potions but we've already got our potions covered you can see that uh, this is my uh, my ghost wand you can see this piece of dirt that's raised up here that's where they spawned and they must have killed themselves with that wand um we'll bring it with us why not it's it's a pretty decent wand um hmm it's better than my, my shuffle, yes. I'll be stuck using arrows, but we'll we'll hope for some good stuff on the next floor. Let's carry on. So we have 76 max health. We're going to very intentionally fly over the, the full health there. Because I'd, I'd rather save that for later. And uh, we've got some really strong stuff to work with here. We've got chainsaws. We've got an interesting wand here with a long recharge time. But we might be able to make it work, to be honest. As well as black holes. This is this is pretty much everything you could dream of in a shop. So this wand is completely trash. There is no fixing this wand no matter what you do. So we're just going to go ahead and feed that to the fish. Um, we definitely want black holes. So that way I can anger Steven and jump through there. Uh, note that I'm going to be doing multiple runs like this in the future. So that way you can see what it's like when you don't get all the, the optimal stuff. This is a random seed on a uh, an unmodded run by the way in case anybody was wondering and um yeah i mean it, it, you, if you play enough runs anointa you just you tend to get lucky every now and then and uh, this definitely feels like one of those runs where i'm getting a little bit lucky and uh yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes so this one's pretty interesting and i may well use it just to show off a pretty cool mechanic so normally this wand would be pretty trash because it's got a two second recharge time However, because it has uh, so many slots 
And because it's a two cast, it's actually going to be really easy to manipulate into being something actually kind of good. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put my arrow in the front, and then I'm going to put the chainsaw after that. Because chainsaw, you can see it has some magical properties. Um, basically what it's going to do here is it's going to reduce my cast delay down to zero. The recharge time reduction isn't going to matter, because we're going to completely bypass that. So I'm, I'm going to put this in my slot one. And uh, I've, I've got a very special set of... Uh, control setup so if you go into your options and your input configure controls you'll see here that um let's see here so mouse wheel down is next item and previous item and use wand you're going to want to have mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down be all three of those now once you've got that set up when when i hit mouse wheel down i should be able to shoot really fast Look at that. So I can shoot pretty much as fast as I can scroll because Chainsaw reduces the cast delay down to zero, which means that I, I can just fire as quickly as I can scroll wheel. And my only limitation at this point is my mana. So that's a really strong strategy. You can see here that this wand otherwise would require an insane amount of fixing, but in its current condition, it's gonna work just fine. And uh, I guess I'll go over, um, like, what, what makes some of these wands good and what makes some of these wands bad. Uh, like, for example, I'm going to leave this uh, Shuffle Yes wand behind. It's only got 180 max mana. It's, it's like, a pretty okay wand. I would definitely use this with, like, a, a, a set of the same projectile on it. But it's, it's really not going to do us any good on this run. I'll keep Trifurcated because multicasts are really, really valuable, and uh, sometimes you don't find them. But yeah, uh, this is looking pretty good. I, I am going to make some more adjustments here if I can. One thing I would love to do is have this drill on a separate wand because it would dig quite nicely on our, uh, our shuffle yes here. Um, but we don't really have a ton of projectiles. I'll, I'll show off what this looks like. Oop, that's definitely not supposed to be on there. This is what it looks like when I don't have my uh, ability to rapid fire it's it's not super great that's that's for certain i could use one of these but if i ever misfire i'm gonna get shot by a disc projectile i'll i'll leave it like that for now we'll play a little dangerous we've got some great perks here uh, hungry ghost is a decent defensive off offensive perk permanent shield is just a really strong perk overall really strong defense and i i think i'll just take it i'm not even gonna worry about the other perk because I have Ambrosia, I'm going to go after Steven. I have a full guide on how to kill Steven on my YouTube. You should be able to track down pretty easily. There's tablet kicking strats. But I feel really comfortable going after Steve in the early game here because I've got Ambrosia, which means that Scode will never be able to do anything to me. We're going to continue to leave this HP here because uh, I've got ton of, a ton of HP anyway, and I really don't have that much to worry about. This wand could be worth keeping over this wand because of the, the capacity. Capacity is always something to consider, because it gives you a lot of opportunity to strengthen your wand build. Um, but I'm okay with leaving this one behind. Th this is definitely a personal preference choice. Uh, I think either one is fine. Uh, this one just would turn into a great teleport wand, which is one of the reasons I'd like to keep it. Um, if we can find a teleport, then it'll become amazing. So welcome to the coal pits. Floor 2 is uh, arguably one of the most important floors in the entire game. Uh, it, it's it's pretty interesting in that regard because uh, you you wouldn't think one of the early game floors would be so important. Oh, this formation here suggests that there's a shop on the other side of this wall, so we're gonna go ahead and dig through that. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that guy. He managed to get a little dam damage on me. That's okay. Health's still looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and take an energy shield, and plasma beam is amazing as well. Freezing gaze is great if you want to go for like a, a dragon kill, for example. Um, it's, it's a very strong spell. If you get unlimited spells, you should definitely play around with it. It also causes a lot of lag, so that is one thing to note. So we've got another shield immediately, which is amazing. We're gonna co go ahead and put this on there. And, uh, now our wand is even better. Um, and let's see if we can get this working with just the passive. Yeah, we can. So because this is after arrow and chainsaw, passives actually have one draw. So one thing that you need to realize in Noita is that you're actually playing a card game. Um, each of these is a, a card, 
and uh, every time you click, you are drawing your deck. Um, so every time I click, we're casting arrow into chainsaw uh, because it's a double spell. And then for the second cast, uh, we would cast energy shield arrow into chainsaw because of the double cast. But we're bypassing the second cast, so we don't have to pay the cost of the 10 mana uh, from the energy shield. And we also get to completely bypass our recharge with that tech that I showed earlier in the run. I would highly recommend setting that up, by the way. It, it, it makes uh, it, it makes it even... It, it's just such a strong mechanic to, to have in the game. And uh, unlike a lot of the other bugs that are being patched out, I feel like this mechanic, because it's, it's been in the game forever, we've, we've had it and known about it and used it for ages. Um, we'll, we'll definitely uh, continue to stick around, I imagine. Unlike uh, Five Wanding and Infinite Wanding. Sadly, uh, I, I felt like those were pretty fun. But, you know, who, who knows? Maybe we'll get some more cool inventory-related stuff to play around with in the future. It'll, it'll be interesting to see uh, with, with Noita being patched again. Some exciting stuff. That's for certain. Uh, I am playing on the beta branch. It is... Uh, May 17th, 2023, just in case anybody was wanting to get, like, a, a number down on this. They, they didn't check the, the the video date or anything like that. These nests can be really annoying, by the way. All you gotta do is, is take your time with them. Be, be nice and slow. It won't be too bad. Uh, we, we have the benefit of freeze, which uh, allowed it to just completely get blocked off as it did. It was, it was pretty nice. Um, you're not always going to be this strong on Floor 2, by the way. It's it's really just a matter of taking your time, but I think Floor 2 is, is where you tend to get strong. Anyways, m earlier thought that I, I need to cycle back around on because my, my brain is, is all sorts of scattered. This is the most important floor in the entire game because it dictates how powerful you get going into some of the more challenging areas of the game. Uh, many, many people struggle with the third floor, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's something that you definitely need to overcome with, uh, knowledge as well as dodging skill. I think both of those are very important. I'm gonna go ahead and kick our tablet straight up. Uh, I do have a, a little guide on that, how to tablet kick up. If you're interested in how to do that, it's another hotkey setup. But, um, yeah, it, ba basically, if you go over to Fungal Caverns, there are only Shuffle No Wands in there. Shuffle No Wands are, like, the key to doing anything in Noita, effectively. Um, you, you want to be able to know exactly what your wand is going to do every single time. So, uh, having an area where you can get some guaranteed, relatively strong No Shuffle Wands in the early game is just absurdly strong. It's, it's very, very good and uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, well, one of the interesting things is that um, there are tiers to s both spells and wands, and uh, b basically the, the lower tiers have some real staple spells in them. So you can find Luminous Drill, Mana, Chainsaw, uh, like all that sort of thing, Teleport, all within Fungal Caverns, which is amazing. Um, this whole time we've been increasing our max HP pretty significantly here, by the way. This is a, yet another one of the reasons why you want to spend this extra HP off of Floor 1, uh, clearing toward Fungal Caverns. Uh, I would recommend never bothering with Fungal Caverns if your health is under 44. 44 and under is a one-shot kill to the explosive mushrooms in there. It's one of the things that I really like to keep track of is, uh... What is the most likely thing to one-shot me on any given floor? And in this floor, it is definitely one of the mushrooms. Obviously, you could always account for a nuke, but then you're playing at around, like, 88 health. And you'd have to leave every time, which is uh, definitely, like, a lot more conservative play style. If you were going for, like, a win streak, that, that would probably be a, a wise move. And obviously, note that that number changes in, like, Nightmare, for example. Because in Nightmare, uh, it, it's double damage taken. Uh, by the way, if you'd like, like, one of these runs done in Nightmare, just let me know. It, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't play a ton of Nightmare, just because uh, there, there's less bosses, and I, I think the bosses are one of the most fun parts of Noita. We'll probably be killing a couple of them on this run, depending on how our luck is. If we can get some mobility, that would be great. 
So, because we've picked up all those extra HPs on this floor, now I'm going to have a ton of extra HP on top of that heal, which is extremely nice. I'm a big fan of that. We're gonna, since we've got extra black holes, I'm going to take a little shortcut around here. And uh, note one of the things that I could do here, before I go into fungal caverns or anything, I could go down because I've got black holes, or I could use unstable teleportadium. But unstable teleportadium requires me to clear each and every one of these um, portals. Because if I teleport up and the, the portal has like an Uko in it, for example, I would die. Obviously, that, that wouldn't happen on this floor. But lava is also a, a high possibility. That sort of thing. Gotta be really careful teleporting around in Noita. Because, you know, every single time you do it, there's a, a strong chance that you could get yourself killed. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna just jump back down. Or jump down into this next area. And then we're gonna black hole our way back up because we've got the extra HP. And I still want to get into fungal caverns and get some good stuff. But I can take advantage of uh, the value that I have in the form of my... Uh, Ooh, let's do one of these, and there we go. Beautiful. So we were able to freeze him and then kill him. That's pretty handy. I'm going to go ahead and take faster movement speed here. Just really good. But yeah, we're, we're going to take advantage of Black Hole, and uh, because we came down here, now I have a teleport, and everything is just going to start scaling even faster now. I'm going to snowball out of control even faster. I shouldn't have bought uh, this long teleport bolt, because short teleport bolt is even better. I like short teleport bolt a lot. One thing you might be noticing is that I am almost entirely ignoring the uh, the wand's stats, and I am looking at the wand spells. Spells are so much more important than wand stats in the early game, and uh, I, I think that's like a really important thing to note. I, I, I think they're pretty much more important for the entire duration of the game. There, there's like a, a couple of chances at really good wands throughout the whole run. Uh, but there is non-stop chances at incredible spells, so you really need to take advantage of those. I'm gonna go ahead and grab Spitter Timer, Double Spell, and Light. Those are all great. And I'm gonna be able to use uh, Spitter Timer here uh, to cast... What, what do I want to cast? Hmm. I'd, I'd love to get some more damage out. I was considering casting the Chainsaw, but that's gonna reduce my uh, my ability to shoot fast, which is no good. Um, but with this double spell, we might be able to do something a little bit like this. Let's see. So th this should cast... Okay, so we need this right here. So, the way this is working, double spell grabs the spitter bolt with timer. This double spell gets put on pause because we're going into the payload. Digging Blast is in the payload. Uh, note that it doesn't deal any damage on imp impact, so we're just using the spitter timer for damage here. And then we've got the double spell reactivating, which grabs the arrow. And then you need to keep in mind that this is a two spells cast wand, which grabs the chainsaw. Um, then we've got the energy shield. And if you can see in the background there, you're casting that full casting block each time. And keep in mind the always cast freeze charge is being applied to the spitter timer, the arrow, and the chainsaw. Um, not at any mana cost, though, because always casts are free. And uh, on top of that, because this is in a payload, it does not receive the always cast. Those are the, the things to keep in mind there. So let's go ahead and jump into that next area. We're, we're running a little bit low on black holes, but keep in mind we did save our, um, our spell refreshes, so we, we should be good to go for a while. And uh, we'll see what we can find in good old fungal caverns. These mushrooms deal 44 damage. The walking mushrooms do 44 damage. They all deal the same. Uh, wouldn't recommend fighting them or de dealing with them, at least at close range. Some scary stuff. I really got to keep an eye on my mana with this wand. You can see that I uh, forced a, a recharge because I, I didn't have the mana to cast all my spells. Um, so yeah, that, that's something that I need to keep in mind. And, uh, so where there's honey, there's bees. And, uh, bees are pretty darn dangerous. I'm gonna mostly ignore this swapper for the time being. There we go. Note that Uko can also spawn in this level, and because of that, you can get a diamond and honey together, which makes ambrosia. That's one of the most important uh, crafting recipes in the entire game, in my personal opinion. Very, very strong material. Um, 
By the way, uh, I didn't say what kind of run this is intended to be. My my game plan is I'm just going to make it a uh, a normal run. We're we're not gonna do any of the the crazy uh, modifiers or anything like that. We're not gonna do all bosses. We're not gonna go do the sun. But if you'd like to see that sort of thing in this format in the future, let me know. It's one of those things. One of those things that uh, I've I've considered, but I, I've never really had the time to just get around it. Just playing Noita and talking to myself, you know? I feel like there's a lot of content like that already on YouTube, and, um... I, I, it, it, I, I was in my own head about it forever. It's like, oh, I, I, it, I wouldn't be able to provide any value that way. But I think that there's probably some people that could get some good use out of it. Hopefully that's you. Uh, let's do a little bit of that. Do we have any concentrated mana left? We don't. If we were smart, we would have been saving that throughout, but that's okay. Um, because we've got black holes, and uh, there's also a good chance we've got some concentrated mana kicking around somewhere in this floor. We've got somebody with a wand. Um, it's a teleport mage. One of the things to note about enemies with wands is that uh, you should, especially when it's an uh, earlier game like this, you should pretty much always assume that they have uh, a personal X thrower, personal fireball thrower in particular, uh, is one of the most dangerous things that you can get hit by, and it will just kill you. Uh, if you don't have the corresponding immunities. So we, we really don't want to get hit. Um, they, they, obviously, there's a high chance it doesn't have that, but if you play like it does have it on there, you're a lot more likely to continue being alive, which is good. So one thing you might be thinking to yourself is, oh, hey, there's Pheromone. We could use that to, to generate a bunch of money by selling all of those empty wands that we've got in the previous floor. And you're right, but if you look at my money, I already have 1,500 gold. If you t if you survive pretty well while looking for your stuff, you're going to have a massive excess of money anyway. Um, gold is not worth that much in this game past uh, the initial like use case of, oh, here's a shop with, with some good stuff in it. Um, th there are like a couple gold dump areas in Noita, but um, genuinely I don't think they're terribly worth it in most cases outside of the very longest of runs. But if you really, really want a lot of gold, you should just go to hell and shoot some of those guys. That tends to be the, the big strat. Um, got a nice looking wand here. One thing that I haven't gone over yet that I really should be is uh, there is a way to tell uh, a lot about your wand just by looking at it. So depending on your floor, depending on like a couple of different things, you're going to be able to understand quite a few things about your wand. Uh, one of the most important things is whether your wand is shuffle yes or no at a glance. If your wand has a crystal embedded somewhere on it, that means that it's a shuffle no. Um, obviously we're, we're in fungal caverns, so all of our wands are shuffled no, no matter what. But, um, you can also tell, you know, th this thing, it's a medium-sized wand, so it's, it's gonna have more capacity than a small-sized wand. Uh, you can tell that it's a single tip, so you know it's going to be a, a shoot, uh, spells cast one, instead of, like, a spells cast two. So you can see this one's got two tips. And uh, th th those sort of things tend to tell you a lot about the wand. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, this guy is dead. He's got short range homing. That's glorious. That's really good. We're going to be able to do some fantastic things with that. And I'm very pleased to have that. And thankfully he didn't have any of the, the terrifying uh, modifiers that I thought he might have. So that's great. Um... Let's go ahead and start digging into these. We've got Plum. It's a, it's good to make a habit of reading into what spells are available on these. These wasps, by the way, are nightmarish. If you don't have good damage output, I wouldn't recommend bothering. Um, but one thing you can do, if you've got Ambrosia, for example, I'm, I'm going to be using the resources that I've got. Obviously, not everybody's going to have Ambrosia. Not everybody's going to be that lucky. But, um... Yeah, if you've got Ambrosia, you can use that to take out the nest first. I would highly recommend holding on to something explosive like Magic Missile to deal with those nests. It's extremely effective. Um, but obviously I've got just enough damage where I don't need to. So yeah. Um, but yeah, lim limited cast spells. Really, really, really good. Alright, chat. Chat? I, I, you're not really chat. I, I guess you're, you're, you're YouTube, YouTube people. H how many... Uh, 
spells cast, do you think that wand is? It's, it's pretty obvious. Another thing to note about high spells cast wands is unless they're extremely high quality, they tend to have a really long recharge time, as you can see there. And uh, it, it rings true for this wand as well. But yeah, this wand is not very helpful. That is mostly just a wand that you really don't want your enemy to have. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully be all right. You can see there's some more ambrosia that was spilt over there. Uh, return is great. You can use that to ferry a lot of wands back into, uh, or down into the next level. And that, that's just very handy. I accidentally didn't do the, the shuffle click properly there. What other wands have we got? Another, oh, there it is. My goodness. Oh, it's beautiful. Bungle Caverns really does have the, the best of everything very very regularly sometimes you just are are gifted the the gold right from the start that's a lot of acid that's one of the things that i was mentioning definitely make sure you're keeping an eye out for those rather dangerous treasure chests or uh, rather dangerous steel boxes not treasure chests they, there can be some pretty nasty stuff in there that's scary that was not very wise of me uh, i'm dropping my black hole wand and leaving that behind because um I, I'm gonna come back for it anyway, and uh, yeah, dude, there's really no reason not to. I've got some basic digging as it is. I've got teleport, so I don't really have any, anything to worry about in that regard. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump down into here, extract the things that we want off of here. So this wand doesn't have the greatest stats, but what it does have is quite a lot of capacity. So it it might be our our top priority wand to end up using. Um, this wand has some pretty nice stats as well, but um, it's rather poor in terms of capacity, and I care a lot about that. I could see myself using this as my black hole wand, for example, but we're going to drop both of these and uh, go back up, grab a couple more things, and uh, then we will be good to go. Go ahead and run on over this away. By the way, if you would prefer like a shorter form wand editing guide where it's um like a post commentary and like fast forwarding between all of the travel and that sort of thing please let me know because that is something that i'm considering it's 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 something that would take a, a fair amount of additional effort but i do think that uh, i could probably do a couple of those that are like much more hyper focused than this which is going to be a little bit more of a uh you know, just an impromptu, improvised sort of thing. We've got quite a few enemies poking away at us here, but we're at 150 life. Keep in mind that my my breakpoint for this floor is 44, so we're we're way way outside of range of that, which is really nice. Um, there's some more ambrosia. We're ju they're just kind of giving us everything on this run. It's been pretty darn kind. There goes the ambrosia. There goes that guy. That's a that's a reduced recharge, which is really good. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Keep in mind that I don't need um, that to pick up that other black hole wand anymore because I've got even more black holes. But I probably will anyway. Here we go. Um, oh, I thought I had a wand around here that I wanted. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, it's this guy right here. Got the mana. Um, this wand can't shoot because there's no projectiles on it, so I have no threat of the... Uh, personal fireball thrower, but I'd love reduced recharge. It, it can really help shore up a wand, especially when you're lacking in chainsaws. If you only have a couple, uh, it can help a lot. Got uh, one of my favorite drinks. I would recommend not splashing this around in fungal caverns. It's a really bad idea, but uh, this will speed up a lot of my travel back and forth, at least hopefully, as long as I play relatively well. These guys are really trying to do a little bit of damage to me. But doing my best to not allow that. Um... This spell is is really just this kind of thing that is meant to kill the player, it feels like. So we're going to avoid using that. And let's go ahead and finally build ourselves a good strong wand. Note that I do have the capacity to go after some boss kills, and I very much intend on doing precisely that. But for the time being, we're going to set up for a level 3, and uh, I'm going to play pretty heavily around... Uh, you know, just, just general defensive strategies, and we'll, we'll see what we can do here. So, we'll, we'll try a triple spell there, and this should be shooting pretty quick. 
Not as quick as I'd like because our recharge is not high enough. So let's go ahead and put this on there. There we go. Now we're running out of mana. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this up front here. Oh, what's going on? Did my game break? Weird. I think my game crashed somehow. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and we'll, we'll be back in just a moment. All right. And hopefully it'll be working here again. Oh, shit. Okay. So this is what happens sometimes when you crash, is you get, like, sent back in time. I don't know how far back in time I am, um, but uh, as you can see, the world is... They, 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 we've got fo the, the, the what, what do you call it? The fog of war back, which is just very spooky. Not something that I like to deal with. Having all of this back, I, I cleared all this out. I worked hard to do this. Uh, let's see here, where were we? Oh, no! So, this is where the mana wand was. And you can see we duped this wand. I, I think our mana is gone. So we are not going to be nearly as strong as we once were. That's a huge shame. Um, but that's okay, because that means that we're just not going to build, like, a Giga Omega machine gun wand, probably. Yep, that's, that's what that means. Okay, well... I guess we're going to have to change strategies. That's fine. You, you've seen the, the machine gun wands before. You get it. Let's go ahead and make something a little different then. So this wand now has the problem of uh, not having enough mana. Uh, we, we were going to use unlimited mana on this thing, but we're instead going to use a, uh, a more dangerous wand that'll deal a lot more damage. Um, but it can also deal damage to me. And uh, if you see the spells in my inventory, you already know the combination we're going to go for. I'm going to use this as my base because we want as much mana as possible. And uh, sadly, we didn't really get anything much better than that. So we'll go ahead and put a short range homing on here, as well as a spitter timer and a plasma beam. That simple. Not really too crazy of a wand, but it'll definitely be very OP. I'm realizing now that my music reset again because we didn't. Uh, we, we didn't save quit normally, we crashed, which means it reverts some of your settings. That happens pretty often. I'm gonna put light on here, because, uh, light's pretty valuable for just general vision. I'm also gonna put a light on my teleport, for the exact same reason. I, 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 put, a, I put a high value on light these days. It's a one mana modifier, which can do a lot of different things. It's just super duper handy, and I would recommend using it pretty regularly. Now, I'm going to use my black holes on this two-cast wand, but because it doesn't have enough mana to cast two at once, I don't have to worry about that at all, which is really nice. Um, and it's got the, uh, the the freeze charge on there, so I'm going to be able to dig a little bit better. And uh, now I can make uh, this as a backup digging wand, which is going to be just way, way better than what I was using. Uh, of course, the, the problem with this setup is I now have four wands, which means I'm going to have to do a lot of back and forth. Um, you could just pick up the, the heart here, it, depending on what your health is. Normally, I'm a lot lower health than this, honestly. Believe it or not. I'm sure if you've seen my gameplay on Twitch, you, you believe it. <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's a couple good places I could be putting this energy shield. One of them would definitely be on my teleport, because I tend to have my teleport out pretty often. But I'm fairly comfy with where it is here as well. Um, let's go ahead and do that. The, the first thing that I like to do on this floor is clear toward the right. And the reason behind that is... Um, there, there's two good reasons. There's a formation where there's like an ice arch... And uh, in that ice arch, there is a guaranteed Heesey mom and a uh, group of Heesey that will uh, basically firing squad you. And the arch will only ever spawn um, right to left. Like if, if you if you go if you approach it from the right, you will be under it. But it can't spawn in the top tile set very regularly. It's it's pretty uncommon. So if you're going right to left in the level, um, you'll often find the ice arch is. Uh, in such a position where you, you don't really have to deal with the uh, the enemies. You can just drop the ice on them, and uh, then you don't have anything to worry about. That said, uh, we're, we're strong enough where we're just going to be able to rip through these guys anyway. So it's, it's not really too big of a deal. That said, we do need to be really careful with our positioning. Holy moly. 
Uh, so we, we got divide by three out of that. Uh, funny thing about divide by three. Uh, melee, uh, we can curse melee as well. Uh, actually, is we can curse melee one of the, the unlocks? I don't think it is an unlock. But divide by three is definitely an unlock. And uh, these unlockable spells you will not be able to acquire unless you go and do the, uh, the, the pearl chest, which will require a special key, and that's a whole thing. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's just the thing that we need to... Ow! I'm shooting myself a little bit. Gotta be careful with that. But yeah, at some point, maybe I'll show that off. Um, probably not on this run. Maybe. I don't know. I just saw an Uko shot through the wall there. If you listen carefully, you can oftentimes hear the crackling uh, that they create. Definitely one of the most dangerous enemies on this floor. They can just kind of one-shot you. But as long as you stay away from the walls and you dodge reasonably... Uh, they're, they're not too bad a lot of the time, but yeah, keeping, uh, keeping distance from walls is the, the big strat. I did not handle that as well as I could have, but we're fine. We're good to go. Oh, and, and uh, as for why I like to clear right, I, I can talk about that again since we're finally here. Uh, we can now go back up to the, to the surface, which means I can go and gather whatever sort of goodies that, that I like. We got another uh, guaranteed no shuffle wand here, and this one has inverse mana. Uh, keep an eye on inverse mana wands; they are some of the most powerful wands in the game. You can do some really silly things with them. But uh, basically, it's it's like imagine if you had add mana, but you don't. It's 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 basically like that. It, they, you you have a ton more mana to work with, um, in bursts at least. We're gonna go after the uh, the pit boss, by the way, because we have everything we need to to do that. Short range homing plus plasma beam is a fantastic boss killer here. Um, if I do more of these, then you will see more boss killers. There, that we'll we'll be doing lots of them. But generally, plasma beam is one of the easiest by a lot because uh, plasma damage. Uh, th this boss has invincibility frames, where every time it gets hit. Um, it, it has like a massive resistance and uh, it iframes as well. Plasma Beam bypasses that because of area damage. And uh, the area damage component will allow it to hit the boss rapidly. And the beauty of Plasma Beam hitting the boss rapidly is this boss replicates uh, whatever projectile you're shooting or whatever projectile has passed through its center last every time it gets hit. So basically it'll start to spam out Plasma Beams like crazy if it gets hit by them. And short range homing should help a lot with that. And note that because of that interaction, I really don't want to hit directly with like a spark bolt trigger. A spitter timer is actually perfect because I don't have to aim directly at them. So the first trigger to activate the boss is right here. And the second trigger to activate the boss is right here. So when I go back and touch this spot right here, the boss will spawn. Note that I have Ambrosia and Teleport, which are both going to make this a lot safer. I'm going to let them get a little bit closer. And then we're going to fire and... Uh, they should be dead now, I imagine. Yep, there we go. So that that can be a really scary fight. There's so many ways to die to that guy. Um, but Wand Connoisseur is big value. You can get a lot of good stuff out of them. I would highly recommend learning how to kill all the bosses. Um, and uh, you can see here, this wand has some good spells on it. Infestation, Worm Launcher, Poison, Chain Spell... ICL, even, to a lesser degree. Teleport, if, if you really want it. All of these are pretty useful. The wand itself, however, is not very good. 11 capacity is very whatever. 54 mana uh, charge speed. I mean, it's technically better than what I've got here. Uh, but it's still pretty poor overall. And it it's, it's just very mediocre as far as wands go. If I had a mana, I'd be a lot more interested in it. But because I don't... Uh, this wand is what really catches my attention. 300 mana charge speed for uh, a slightly lower capacity. Two spells cast instead. Downward LARP is pretty helpful for a couple different things. Um, this is the wand that we want. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one. And uh, we'll come back up for our, t our black holes. They're in the perfect spot here. So we'll, we'll leave this up here. And uh, Mato Sade has many purposes as well. So I'm going to bring that spell with me. I, I personally find a lot of value out of it. It's a very, very helpful spell. Especially when you don't have black holes. If you get melee immunity, it is basically just black holes, but better in a lot of cases. This is a formation, 
In Noita, the, basically everything is set up in tiles, and uh, if you can start to recognize the tiles, you can learn uh, some pretty valuable stuff. So through here, there's there's a guaranteed, or nearly guaranteed, heart or chest spawn, and we got the, the heart this time, so that's great. You can tell from this side, it's like a smooching gorilla or like a Grandpa Simpson, if you will. Uh, you, you did, of course, I cut through it, so it's a little hard to see. Uh, Shoutouts to Solar for <laughs> just making uh, that such a meme. It's great. Uh, we're going to take downward, LARP, downward, LARP, downward LARPA because it's really good. There's many, many dumb things to be done with that. And we're going to go ahead and uh, move our current kill wand onto this. And uh, we're going to go after a couple more bosses because uh, why not is essentially the reason. It would, it would make a lot of sense to go kill some more bosses. And uh, on top of that, I'm going to take short range homing and this off. How fast do I want this shooting is the real question. How fast does this shoot right now? So the next two bosses that we're going to be facing, I'd much rather have perfect control over the plasma beam, which is why I'm uh, removing the, the spitter timer and homing, because I think that those are only going to make things a little bit more annoying for me overall. And uh, we should have, like, a reduce recharge. Maybe not. No. Because we lost it in the crash, right? Okay. Let's not worry about that. <laughs> Delicious water. Okay. So, I guess we could theoretically put the chainsaw on here. And how's the digging for this? It's much slower, but I'm just going to accept that. It's a, it's a cost to doing business. We're going to have to have the, the slower speed. I'm going to put the teleport on here. Um, I care a lot about the recharge time and cast delay of my uh, teleport wand, so a lot, oftentimes you'll see me using a much smaller wand for my teleport. Um, but that's okay. That, that should be pretty good. And this double spell is actually preventing this wand from wrapping, so I can just put this back here, and uh, now it'll wrap and shoot a little bit faster. And uh, one really handy storage tip that I would highly recommend is uh, using zero and low cost spells at the end of a wand that is meant to do like one very simple thing. So this digging blast is uh, solely designed to do some super basic digging. And uh, because of that, I can have a bunch of junk on the end of it and not really have too much to worry about. I'm going to drop a bunch of the spells that I feel are probably not going to be useful on this run anymore. And... Um, yeah, then we'll carry on. We're, we're going to be going to the surface and killing a couple more bosses, so... I'm very happy to have the inventory space. There's going to be a couple of very important things. Note that in the most recent patch of Noita, you can now drop spells and pick up spells while... Um, without edit wands everywhere, which was uh, the, the, the brand new change that's really cool. we got to keep that mod in mind because there's a big potential for that to become quite useful. This is Acceleration. It'd be just kind of handy to have for the surface. I'm going to leave my Unstable Teleportadium behind because it's a little bit less useful at this point. There's only one or two more times where it'll become handy. But yeah, for the surface, Acceleration is going to be very handy. Man, th this whole run has felt incredibly convenient. It's been quite nice so far. Obviously, we've got our Black Hole to work with. And we've got 113 life. That's a thing to note. Uh, some of these bosses that I'm about to be fighting do have some pretty significant damage range, but thanks to Ambrosia, I feel relatively safe. And uh, we'll probably go get a full heal before we leave as well. Might as well. I, I, I think I'm, our biggest danger is my own self-damage potential. It's pretty high. Uh, we're, we're intentionally leaving our black hole wand behind because there's an extra chance at a, a pretty good wand out of the uh, pyramid boss here. Pyramid boss can drop wands on the level of uh, the dragon, for example. Uh, which is uh, a boss that appears much later in the game normally. So I'm, I'm very happy to potentially have something from that sort of power level range. Got some unique enemies in here. Sometimes you have to be pretty careful. There, there can be uh, a ton of rare enemy spawns here. You can get uh, Heart Mage to spawn here. You can get Sir Uko to spawn here. You can get um, mo many of the mages to spawn here. It's it's a very dangerous place. One of the things that I would recommend before fighting this boss is uh, clearing out all the the basic riffraff. There's lots of uh, these stupid shields this time around. Or what do you call them? Mask traps? Yeah, probably that. That makes more sense than shield. 
But yeah, there we go. I'm feeling mostly ready to fight this boss. I'm just going to go ahead and activate it. And uh, because we've got area damage component, I'm going to be able to fire right through this guy's shield. Normally, I'd have to sit around and wait. But because we've got that area damage component, we don't have anything to worry about, which is very, very handy. There's still that black flame fly, which I'm a little bit concerned about. But other than that, we're good to go. There we go. So that was a good clean kill. One thing that you can do if you're feeling confident and you have Ambrosia and you've got Teleport, um, you can hunt around a little bit for a Heart Mage. And uh, if you find one, you can then pull all sorts of shenanigans and start multiplying your health like crazy using the Heart Mage exploit. Um, there's that Sir Uko I was talking about. That is a very rare spawn, but a very deadly one. They have, like, homing normal Uko shots. Uh, like I said, this place is no joke, especially if you're going for, like, a, a guaranteed win. Um, if you're going for nothing but a win, I wouldn't recommend going after a lot of these bosses. But if you're looking to get really powerful, that's when I would recommend going after these bosses. Because that's what, that's what Noix is all about. It's about getting powerful. It's not about winning. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I have a lot more fun just, like, getting super OP than I do just trying to win over and over. Uh, but that said, you know you will find your own play style and you will find your own way to enjoy the video game. It's one of those things. So we actually did get a heart mage, which is great. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, track this guy down. And uh, this is for you, buddy. So they're gonna come with me. Hopefully. I need to be careful not to shoot them. And uh, okay, there we go. So this guy, he's he's not great with the teleport wand, but he's he's better than some. I need to be, uh, I need to be tactical about how I fly up here. I'm gonna use water flight. Uh, I could use tablet flight, but this guy can eat tablets, so I, I really don't want to do that. Um, this is, he's, be, he's he's struggling, but as you can see, uh, as long as he's got a functioning wand, he will shoot the wand instead of shooting uh, his normal shot, which means that you can. Really bring him wherever you like, as long as he's willing to cooperate at least a teensy tiny bit. There we go. He's he's been a little bit of a struggle to get here, but he's he's doing his best. Come on, you could you could do a little better. You could do a little. Come on, you can you can aim that thing. I I've I've seen you do this better. Okay, there we go. There we go. He's doing it. All right, perfect. So now that we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and kick the wand out of his hand. Please please give, and. Uh, now we're going to stand right on top of him with some Ambrosia. Keep a close eye on that Ambrosia because it's very important that you keep that as high as possible. And what we want to do is get our HP under 10. He's, he's struggling a little bit. HP under 10, and then we, we go and pick up. There we go. That's, that's good enough. It's at 16. But um, you'll see now, because he halved our HP over and over with each shot... It's going to double repeatedly, and we're going to have a ton of extra HP to work with. Uh, note that you can do this with the heart over the uh, in the orb above the pyramid as well, but uh, obviously 660 life is a lot. I just wanted to demonstrate that. It's kind of cool. Nala's like one of the best spells you can get from this, by the way. Um, the, the copy random spell stuff is pretty good too. Might be able to make use of that. And uh, our wand that we got was pretty bad, but it's got a quad cast, so I can't complain too hard. I'm pretty happy with this pyramid boss. It went really well. Of course, now that I've got um, a little bit less of that HP bar to work with, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more afraid. Um, at least it looks like it's less. Obviously, I didn't really take any damage. I'm going to go ahead and use the acceleration here to speed up the process of going after the next boss. And I think I'm going to full heal before I go after the next boss because... I'd rather not take any risks at this point. I think this run is set up to basically go god mode. I could I could go to parallel worlds. I could go do the sun quest. This this run is ready to do everything, and I haven't even made it into Hisi base yet. Um, that, that's the power of going after these boss fights a lot of the time. You can get absurdly powerful in uh, a relatively short amount of time. It's really, really nice. I would recommend if you're looking to improve at Noita... Um, one of the ways of doing it is uh, learning these boss fights. Uh, th this worm here is a very intentional part of my strategy, and uh, I ruined it. I did not get nearly as much of the, the juices that I wanted out of that guy as I, I could have gotten. Maybe we'll, we'll have enough, we'll see. 
We've got 99 seconds. 120 seconds, that might be enough. So we're going to dig down into uh, the first level here. And remember earlier in the video when I was talking about how uh, the, the only thing worth it in the collapsed mines is the... Uh, the dark zone, the dark place. Uh, th th we're we're gonna head over there now, and we're we're hopefully going to avoid most of the confrontation. It's gonna be a couple frogs, I'm sure. That is the the scariest thing you can encounter here. That fire missile would be uh, perfect for going and killing the alchemist if you're quite adept at the fight. That is uh, pretty much all you need. These enemies here are one of the main reasons why you want to have access to a um the ability to see which we got from consuming that warm blood we have 70 seconds of vision which is really nice note that light could give us like flashes of vision and get us through here uh torch works all seeing eye the perk works but not the uh the spell so you do have several different options but uh yeah i i personally find that is the most consistent and easy and now we're up to 710 max life, which is just an absurd amount of HP. This run has been going pretty smoothly, all things considered. Considering we, we literally lost, like, uh, our mana. And we'll, we'll, we'll see how this run continues to scale. I think depending on what I get from uh, Alchemist, we, we're going to be able to do some extremely cool stuff. Let's go ahead and sip a little bit more acceleration here. I do apologize for the, the crazy lighting that is a, a byproduct of the worm blood. So, um, we, we just jumped over the tree here. We're going to walk a little bit further over this way. And let's drop down here. This zone can be a little bit scary. you got to be quite careful of the, uh, the copy mages. They are by far the most deadly enemy in here because they can copy, um any attack, uh, including some really, really scary laser attacks, so we need to be careful. Um, I could go further over and dig from much further, but uh, I'm, I I'd like to show off some of these enemies. This guy, this he now has inherited this laser attack, which is incredibly dangerous. Actually, he didn't, huh. But yeah, if they if they get a hold of that laser, it's, it's very, very scary, so keep an eye out for that. We need a couple more shots here. There we go. So yeah, now we can just hug this left wall here, and we'll be able to get to the boss. Looks like there's a little bit more stuff in the way than I was originally anticipating. This is really nice to have Berserkium here. It's pretty much the ideal liquid to, to go up against this boss with, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to have it. There we go. So these plasmas are uh, going to punch through this guy's shield. And uh, we just need to keep firing on him, and uh, he's gonna die. You can see I'm very intentionally keeping the the center sphere away from this guy. If he takes the center sphere, he'll uh, redirect the shot back at you, and um, the ball will start to do increased damage. But uh, yeah, plasma's just absurdly good at dealing with those three bosses. If you find it, you are in for. A crazy run. I like Alpha, I like Phi, I like Gamma. That's the key that you need to go and do the, the crystal, uh, or the, the, the chest quest with. You gotta go and feed it music from all of the, uh, the, 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 the music boxes sitting around the world. There's also Dark Chest, but Dark Chest kinda sucks. I wouldn't worry too much about Dark Chest. But yeah, now we've got unlimited black holes. We, we've got... We've got lots and lots of shenanigans to pull now. If I had mana, I'd be pretty interested in grabbing the notes here. Or if I had plans on doing a significantly longer run, a D-sharp EG will bring you to the surface once per New Game Plus, and it's absurdly useful. I would highly recommend it. And, uh, yeah. I, I guess we'll just head on and continue with our run. That's pretty much where I'm at. Uh... Trying to not take too much more damage. But yeah, at this point, I would say that this run is like, it's GG. We, we have won. And uh, I don't think too many people would disagree with that. So we'll, we'll just wander on down at our, uh, at, at like a slightly increased pace. Uh, like I said, the early game in Noita is uh, really, really important. If you can get a strong early game, you will just snowball out of control. And, uh... 
yeah, that's that's precisely what has happened on this run here. We have uh, we've snowballed out of control to an absurd degree. We're gonna go ahead and dig straight down here. Check out the the wands. You never know what kind of goodies they'll have in store for you. You can get some really nice stuff out of this area. Uh, of course, you need black holes or matosade or some some form of uh, strong digging to get through here. But if you've got it, you might as well use it. Here we go. Uh, the way you're supposed to solve this, by the way, is it's po pouring some teleportadium into a randomly spawned eye that appears in the third level occasionally. Um, deceleration has some interesting characteristics. Boomerang strong for late game. Earthquake has some interesting stuff. Gigasaw Blade is dangerous. Nothing here really speaks to me, but um, Boomerang is like okay. I'll keep in mind that it's there and maybe we'll come back for it. We're going to use the teleport to get back over here. And uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and make a stronger wand. Uh, the, the question now is, what do I want to do? And it's it's kind of difficult because we didn't really have, or we don't really have anything that's like terribly crazy OP. We, we really want, at this point, like one spell that just does crazy shit. And we don't have any of those just yet, but I'm, I'm sure we'll find something. For now, let's just make unlimited black holes, because that's just amazing. So, that will be good. And let, let's head down to the next floor. Oh, you know what? I, I should definitely, like, rebuild my wand to have more range. That would make good sense. Because I definitely want to have my range. You could leave this heart here, by the way, if you were doing a long run. But because we're planning on finishing, I'm going to take it now. But, uh... It, it, playing with these hearts and like j just trying to take advantage of them is is pretty fantastic you can do some amazing stuff also by the way if you're like newer to noita and you find any of this is like going too fast and you want specific things to be focused on for for these runs please let me know the things that you want to be focused on because uh, I've, I've been playing this game for over 3,000 hours, and it is very, very hard for me to be like, oh yeah, this is what a new player needs to know. Sometimes it feels like I, I, I skip a step. So, if, if this ends up being a more intermediate guide than a more noob-friendly guide, I, I do apologize. I do hope that everybody can get something from this. We've got a worm here. These guys don't really do a lot of damage, but they have a guaranteed chance, or they have a chance at a heart. I think it's 50-50. This guy we got unlucky on. That's a lot of um, worm blood. If you're a nightmare, I would highly recommend carrying around a flask of worm, worm blood with you at all times. Rare polybear spawn. These guys can spawn outside of the magic temple that appears on the far left of this level. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. There's a couple enemies like that. We're gonna put short range homing on, short, on our, uh, plasma beam again, and it'll just punch straight through Steven here. He will not have a good time. Very interesting perk spawns here. I believe the that uh, the spawns of these perks are due to the crash. Normally, you're not supposed to be able to find like two hungry ghosts in a row like this. It, or it's like super duper rare. Like it's, it's not very common. But uh, double faster movement speed with like one stop after another is pretty crazy. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that. Um, we've got a spark bolt double trigger, circle of acid, lightning bolt. Some pretty strong stuff. The plasma beam orbit obviously is great here because I could have used that uh, to kill the one boss if I wanted. But thankfully I don't have to. I'll take lightning for now and the spark bolt double trigger. Those are both great. And... What do I want to do for damage? Circle of acid is obviously not the, the safest tool. To work with let's let's use glitter glitter bomb fuck it we, we can make a glitter bomb cool so we're going to do some shenanigans uh divide by three copy random spells and then we're gonna put glitter bomb there and gamma where do i want gamma to go here i i'm, I'm gonna need to empty this out really quick but let's oh that's that's a lot <laughs> that's hang on we, we gotta put one of these on here no way i don't blow myself up too much there we go so now we're out of glitter bombs 
And uh, I'm going to put this at the front of the wand, and I'll use my alpha here instead, and then we can keep our gamma there. And um, now, let's just take a brief... Uh, you know, maybe we can take the chains off. We probably don't even need the cast delay reduction. Or the... I, I mean, we don't get the cast delay reduction because it's on the outside of the wand. But I, I could pair it by putting it up at the front like this if I wanted to. But keep in mind that uh, this cast delay, so it adds 0 0.07... That cast delay will be added on. Um, but this might be the play. Let's see here. I'm gonna try putting this here. Keep in mind that we're gonna get like a ton of lag from this wand. It is pretty funny. Um, let's see here. I don't know if this is working exactly like I want it to. Maybe I should put the Phi here instead. And then have a Gamma here. Let's try that. that. In theory, could be more shots. Let's let's play around with this for a little bit, and we'll see how it runs. And uh, obviously we've got unlimited digging, so I don't really need to worry too much about that. This wand has outlived its usefulness. Uh, the, the recharge time is just too significant. And is very annoying at this point, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast out these black holes, so that way I don't have to use them anymore. There we go, and now I can pair the chainsaw drill here. That way I can shoot faster, and uh, we'll put this in this order here. And now we've got lots of black holes to work with. That's great. Okay, so we've got a weird funny wand. I guess I should explain how this works, because it's probably not in oh my god, entirely clear. Oh my god, the lag is insane. <laughs> this is such a stupid wand. Oh, this is a really bad idea. Hang on, let me let me fire off all these things. And we'll, we'll talk about this design. In just a moment. <clears throat> so, just pretend this is the, the glitter bomb, right? So that's going to be zeroed out. And I, I guess it won't even be needed there with the... Hang on, we, we got to swap some stuff around here. It's one of those things. You can get wands working well, but to get them working perfectly, it, sometimes it requires that little bit of extra thought. So, obviously this gamma isn't going to be doing anything, while this alpha will be doing something. So, spark bolt, double... Tri th this is not cast. Th 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 it goes uh, glitter bomb into spark bolt trigger, but because it's zero, it doesn't do anything. The double cast is a thing. Uh, short range homing and downward LARPA is applied to the payload. Triple spell grabs alpha and then uh, divide by three has its own draw as well as copy random spell thrice. Note that copy random spell thrice is going to hit this every time because we're, we're going back to card game analogies. Um, every, every single spell here played before is been put into the discard pile, which means the only random spell left to cast is Phi. Um, there are exceptions to this rule where certain things won't go into the discard pile depending on how you set things up. But uh, that, that's generally how it tends to work, so we can manipulate this to hit Phi every time, which is really handy. And we've got divide by three on copy random spell thrice, which means we're getting even more uh, glitter bombs and Phi is going to be grabbing the spark bolt double trigger and the glitter bomb and spamming it out uh, This alpha is just another uh, Glitter bomb. It's really not that necessary. It's just an extra 30 mana for not that much But it, you know, it's it's kind of a thing. In fact, I, I, I guess maybe this would be like the more mana efficient variant um, But you know, it's one of those things We'll, we'll play around with it I'm really not getting as many as I thought I would. It's interesting. Hmm. I want to try swapping this around. There we go. That looks a lot better. And by that, I mean a lot laggier. <laughs> but it, it, it is a lot more. Let's try that out for a little while. It's one of those things where... Sometimes you just gotta move a couple spells around. The gods are very angry with me. I don't really care. This is a floor that I would not recommend spending a lot of time on. Uh, unless you have explosion immunity. It's a really bad place to be. Uh, you can take a lot of damage here very, very easily. But, um... 
yeah, we're, we're, we're relatively okay because we've got a ton of HP. I'm not going to worry too much about it. And uh, this is definitely a wand that I don't want to shoot too much. The glitter bombs are funny because I can use them to, like, break bullets or take cover from bullets, for example. I'm, I'm about ready to swap this wand out already. Whatever is on this next wand here, I'm probably going to take something off of it and use that instead. Because this is a, a tad on the laggy side, that's for certain. Do a little bit of that. That guy is extremely dead. Just, just supremely dead. Fun thing to know about Glitter Bomb is that it won't deal damage to you as long as you're in the air. Uh, it's like the landing explosion is when it deals damage to the player. Okay, what do we have on here? We got add mana, which is just spectacular. Um, but w w there, there's like a couple more things that I, I need to bring up about this wand. You need to fully, fully understand all the, the dumb stuff going on with it. So one thing to note is that uh, copy random spell thrice will copy the random spell three times. Uh, and cost the mana drain. So this is 150 mana from the uh, divide by three. Uh, or it would be the uh, 120 mana times three uh, for, for that. So the, the 360 mana, if it were on that. But uh, even if I didn't have the mana to cast it, it would still work. Like, that's that's just a whole thing. It's kind of insane. Um, but yeah, now that we've got this wand here let's let's try swapping this out we'll go i can't really afford to go gamma i, th I think i'm just gonna put this on the inside and call that good enough it's pretty cool it's a lot of bullets it's a lot of bullets we'll try that out for a little while and put another double spell here this wand's pretty much dead to us i need some extra inventory space I'm going to get rid of our lights, because we've got enough of those, and we only need one black hole. There we go. Let's carry on. I should probably have this mana on the inside here. Obviously, having that on the inside means that it won't cost me any, uh, any extra stuff. There we go. So yeah, this thing should just kill everything in like one or two hits, I imagine. It's almost, uh, I imagine that direct hitting with this is almost worse than not because of the downward LARPA on this wand. But you can see that it, <laughs> it definitely does some stuff. I might want to take this out of the, the trigger, to be honest. Some, sometimes having a trigger can be a bad thing, and we might be in one of those situations, to be honest. Uh, precision. The reason why these triggers are always so strong, by the way, or are very, very often so strong, is because of their uh, their precision and cost. Basically, being able to shoot exactly where you want all the time is really, really valuable. Especially when enemies are like unpredictable and there's stuff like swappers in the game, it can be really, really scary and annoying to to deal with that. So if we had our teleport, we'd be able to use this to. Um, to go and gather some free stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take Healing Bolt here because I've, I've got unlimited healing. So, in, in case there was any doubt that this run could go the distance um, between Alpha and uh, Healing Bolt, we, we literally have unlimited healing. All we really need on this run is a, a slightly larger wand, which you could either go to the far right of the pyramid and dig down for, or get lucky on Pyramid Boss, or kill Tiny, or, or go to the the guaranteed 26 cast, you know, we've, we've got options. We've got many options. Holy Bomb's pretty funny. This spell's pretty good. Uh, that's... That is Giga Holy Bomb. I'll bring it with me. I can appreciate a good light show. We're not going to go through that portal because... Oh my goodness. That's unusual. Because uh, this would activate and likely cause problems so not terribly interested in that if you don't activate the eye it only gets one activation and uh, it'll earthquake a lot of the time if you destroy the uh, hourglass so that that's a whole thing be really careful using black holes on this floor the gravity is super scary it's a great way to take a ton of damage 
very, very easily. Let's see, we are running out of mana. But we've got the regen to, to make it work. It's not too bad. And fire damage is a much bigger deal for me now that I've got all this extra HP. Same thing for, for poison. You gotta keep in mind what is flat damage and what is percent damage. A lot of the things that you think might be percent damage are, are flat, like, for example, um, suffocation damage or uh, curse damage. Those are both flat. Um, that, that said, it, it's it's still pretty deadly early game. You gotta be careful. Um, mana to damage is pretty cool, but we don't really have anything to work with for that, unfortunately. Fireball throw is kind of interesting. I'm trying to keep my wand safe, so that way I don't end up dealing damage to myself. But, um, yeah, let's move into the next area here. Keep in mind we've got a scode to deal with, so I'm gonna swap this out for one of these. And, um, yeah. Plasma beam, or plasmas are just really, really good. <laughs> I'm using them a lot more sparingly now, because obviously they're incredibly deadly to the player. Um, but that doesn't stop it from being really useful. Matter Eater here. This this would allow you to dig forever. Um, pretty good, but not necessarily. Uh, not necessary for this. Unlimited spells is kind of nice. We could potentially do some stuff with that. Um, hmm. Trying to see what I could do for builds. I think I'll pull a classic here. So, I've got unlimited blood mist. Th this is every projectile type, and blood mist actually is a projectile, funny enough. Downward larpa isn't going to do anything here, but this will make it so we've actually got some damage on our blood mist, and, uh, yeah, it's going to do some pretty nice damage. It's, it's been a long time since I've had uh, a good old homing mist wand. It's uh, this This one is safe to the player, too, which is nice. Um, obviously, swapper mages are going to be scary, but that's just something we're going to have to play around. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four, so that's a little bit awkward, but it's fine. You can see that we're really lacking uh, in size for our teleport wand at this point. So I'm going to be looking for a replacement, but for the time being, we're doing fine. It's okay. Let's go ahead and jump into... The, um, the jungle. The jungle is one of my favorite biomes in the entire game, because it's where the game tends to slow down. If you're not strong by the jungle, the jungle will help you get strong. If, if, you, if you can survive a little while in this area, you'll be okay. And most of the enemies you can really just attack from a distance and be okay against. Um, once again, a, a big part of that is having digging and having movement both of those tools are very very helpful for for existing and obviously our game is just struggling at this point because we're, we're casting so much freeze charge but freeze charge is our only damage dealer so we've kind of got to make that uh concession for our, our damage sake we've got personal fireball thrower there which is obviously still pretty scary less scary now that i've got a ton of hp but it's a bit of a thing and I guess I should talk about why this wand is total crap. Um, four seconds of recharge time, 19 mana regen, four spells cast, seven capacity. Just nothing about it's very good. Um, the only thing that you could really do with this is um, put like five spells on it and do the, uh, the tech that I was showing earlier in the run that was allowing me to shoot quickly with that wand. If you were in rough shape, you could use that wand, but um, I would certainly recommend against it if you can. If you've, if you've got any other option, probably go for the other option. So Dragon Cave always spawns here. It's a very, very handy place to be. This boss can be really scary. He can just kind of kill you instantly if you don't have melee immunity. So make sure that you're ready for the fight. And uh, I'm feeling pretty ready, but let's let's see how ready I really am. Uh, you can see I haven't killed him in one hit yet, so we're going to kick him. Because we're using freezing damage, I'm able to just kick him. I used some Ambrosia there, but I didn't want to get close to the Blood Mist. Uh, because obviously that would wipe it off. We got a funny Petrify Wand with exactly 9 capacity. It's about as bad as I could possibly imagine. Doesn't really matter. This wand is more than strong enough to win the game with. But we just want to make sure that we've got... A little bit of money going into these last couple areas because uh, the the wands start to get pretty costly coming up here. 
things are will end up costing upwards of 4,000 gold by the very last. Um, explosive projectile is a really strong spell, but as not always cast on a wand that small, I would need to be pretty desperate to use that, and uh, I am far from. But if you had like a hollow egg, for example, plus uh, that, you could very easily um, deal with the majority of enemies outside of the ones immune to explosives, like uh, the uh, the metal fairy pixie guys that throw lances. Those guys are immune to explosions, and they're pretty annoying. Some of the mages are as well. There's definitely some pretty dangerous enemies in that regard. Uh, let's see here. By the way, uh, would you comment down below on what speed you're watching this video at? I'm interested to see if people are treating this more like a, a let's play or like a tutorial. Whenever I watch tutorials, I, I always watch videos at like multiple times speed. But I'm hoping that this has a, a, a decent level of entertainment value as well, just to see me blasting through the game. And uh, yeah, de definitely like comment and that sort of thing. Let me know if you want to see more of these because uh, I, uh, th this is really very experimental for me. I'm not sure if we'll do more of these, but if people like it, then I definitely will. Um, we, we got a pretty good wand here, but you can see there's no diamond on it, which means that uh, or there's no gem encrusted in it, which means that it's a shuffle yes wand. Which means that it's probably not going to be helpful, unless I can unshuffle it, which is kind of what I'm banking on at this point. Because I could really, really use a wand with uh, some prodigious size and space. That would that'd be great. We've got another Skode to deal with. Skode is normally pretty scary, but um, with a wand like this, I do not... Oh, you know what? Actually, he's immune to freeze, so... I'm gonna wait out the, the blood mist, and then I'm gonna try and kill him with the, um... I'm gonna try and kill him with the tablet. The blood mist will slow down the, the shot a lot, but if we do this... Oh, man. I survived it. Okay. Well, uh, let's try one of these out. Survive that. How many of these do you think he can survive? Whoops. There goes the rest of the fish. Maybe one of these. It's blocking a lot of the damage. Keep an eye on that Ambrosia. Gotta be careful. Okay, so we've got Freeze. We've got Triplicate. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna roll. Uh, obviously, I could make Peace of the Gods, but I'm not really interested in that. Stainless is kind of nice, but I'm looking for something fancier. Extra health is a lot of health. Just go crazy. I'm out of money. This was a bad idea. Okay. Uh, let's swap this back over to that. Concentrated light bounce would be pretty funny. Oh, you know, one of the things I wanted to try was this. We've got a huge cast delay. And I don't really have any way to bypass that because I can't get the chainsaw in behind the phi. So that, that's the big problem there. If I could get like a Luminous Drill or something, that would help a lot. But this spell adds Cast Delay, which means that it's going to cause some huge, huge problems back there. That's just a whole thing. And there's not really much getting around it, sadly. I think we're going to just stick with our Spark Bolt Trigger. I apologize. Some, some runs are like that. Some runs you just end up with a Spark Bolt Trigger wand. A lot of runs you, you can come up with something a lot fancier. And uh, I assure you that if we continue doing these, I mean, there, there's a good chance even on this run that we end up with something a little bit cooler than what we currently have. Just got to look around for it a little bit. One of those things. So keep in mind that robots are immune to freezing, and uh, they can really use that to their advantage very often. Freezing is um, very, very strong. Except the things that it doesn't work against. It's definitely one of those got a wand, which isn't allowed. Only I'm allowed wands. With my lack of explosion immunity, these uh, unstable crystals do not make me feel safe. But yeah, Vault is a scary place to be. If uh, you're not insanely strong, I mean, even if you're quite strong, you're likely to get chipped down here. There's lots and lots of enemies. Normally by this point, though, if you've gone through jungle fairly thoroughly, you've dealt with dragon, 
you've, you've been keeping good spells on you. You're, you're, you're gonna be in pretty darn good shape for the most part. You can see we've got a ton of recoil on this wand. Recoil can be used to your advantage. Keep in mind that you can influence it pretty heavily. If you hold toward the direction you're, uh, you're shooting, your recoil will, will send you more up than away. If you hold away, it'll send you more away than up, obviously. And if you hold spacebar, uh, it'll send you flying. If, if you hold whatever your jump button is, it, it will just absolutely send you. And uh, it, it's pretty helpful at times. It's, it's good to know those little things. Letting go of spacebar um, at the, the correct timings can help a lot with uh, controlling your, your movement. There we go. There's a lot of gold there. Um, I, I, you, you might be seeing that I ignore gold a lot, and uh, it, it's just because HP is worth more than gold, as far as I'm concerned. And if, if you can get that philosophy in your head, you'll take significantly less damage. Uh, that said, we've got HP to spend, so we might as well. It's one of those things. Um, Omega Saw Blade's pretty funny, by the way. Undercharge is hilariously strong but I definitely don't want to use it on this floor just yet. And multiplying it's really bad because you get a ton of crumble effect. Uh, as for the wand design, of course, we've got a high recharge time. Anything above a second, uh, if you don't have like a massive capacity wand, it's going to be pretty annoying to fix and you're probably going to have to use the, the scroll wheel method if you're going to want to make good use of it. But that said, I have had, like, 25 capacity wands with, like, three seconds of recharge that I've made quite effective. It, it really just requires um, the, the right materials. A any, any wand with a high capacity and a no shuffle uh, can be a, a fixer-upper in my eyes. Because you, you can find just about anything you need to, to get something going. There's that uh, metal fairy thing I was talking about. This thing is very resilient to a lot of things. That said, you can kill it with your tablet if you position it properly. It can be a little bit of a pain, though. Also, the fact that they're super, super tall is really advantageous for you, because they, they can't really hit you super well due to that. And uh, yeah, I don't really think there's too much reason to continue engaging in this fight, because it's not like I'm going to get a ton out of it. I'm mostly interested in just trying to find an extra wand or uh, extra money. That's a lot of healing. I gotta be careful. Oof. Yeah, that's why. So freezing into melee is definitely one of the ways I could die. I'm gonna jump off of this floor, because I've been pushing it a little bit, that's for sure. Um, let's go ahead and use... Did I drop my plasma somewhere? I may have. Okay, let's try this out. There we go. A couple of Giga Saw Blades did the trick. By couple, I mean a lot. <laughs> a lot of Giga Saw Blades did the trick. So we've got Friendly Fly, and we've also got Accelerative Homing. I've, I've got some pretty fun stuff to play around with here. Mist of Spirits can be pretty good. I'm going to dump this wand in the ceiling and hope that no enemy ever picks it up. If you really want to be safe, you should probably dismantle your wand and remove all the stuff from it. I'm going to go ahead and steal this spell. And I guess we'll get rid of Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt has some interesting characteristics, but I don't think it's going to come into use on this run, sadly. So, uh, Summon Friendly Fly is pretty expensive, but they, they should have freezing damage on them, so it should be a pretty effective way at uh, dealing some very good damage to enemies. Uh, this Fi has become a problem now because it's grabbing the Spark Bolt trigger. At this point, I really want to swap it out. And... Uh, it, basically, it's killing all of these summon friendly flies, which is the, not something that I want. I want to keep these guys alive if possible. So, that's what we're going to do. With that freeze charge on there, frozen melee should be able to instantly kill stuff, and it'll be really good. Um, I can afford one more reroll, and I will. We got teleportitis, no more shuffle. I dropped that beautiful shuffle yes wand earlier, but uh, I'm happy to use it here. It's fine. That is fine. And, once again, we don't have to drop spells in here, because, um, they, they, they changed the way that works, which is really nice. So that guy is normally really scary, but because we one shot killed him, it's not that big of a deal. We gotta keep in mind that we have a short-range homing on this, which is going to allow them to kill enemies very cleanly. I can black hole them away, so that way I don't have to deal with them. 
the fact that they like come as close to the player as they do can be pretty scary, especially if you get twitchied. The twitchy effect can be really dangerous. Let's see here. This is this is going pretty good. So I, I want to leave this floor with around three to four thousand gold, ideally. That would be the the objective. The amount of money that I'd like. That way I can just be a teensy tiny bit more powerful for the boss. That we have in here. It's a rather large wand with a long recharge time. That's the kind of wand you could fix if you had the if you had the materials. Sadly I do not. There we go. So yeah, the trick to using these flies effectively is um, making sure that they don't, like, die instantly from some sort of damage effect. Note that these ghosts are immune to the uh, the effect of the freeze. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, the damage they will take... Is, uh, I, so they don't take frozen or melee damage. So they're taking basically no damage at all from my current setup. I definitely... If I had to characterize this run with, like, one weakness that I had, because most runs do miss something... Uh, this one missed a lot of damage modifiers. We, we didn't really find a whole ton to play around with. And that's okay. Because, uh, you know, the, the Noita is really a lot more interesting when you're making do than when you have literally everything you could ever dream of. Let's see if we can punch through here. Gotta be really careful with that black hole effect. That is pretty dangerous. Almost got... A, wow, double wand. That's rare. Um, well, with the, with the Thunderstone, no less, apparently. I must have lost my, my black hole somewhere along the way. Hey, it's another mana. Look at that. And that's a really nice wand, so hopefully we can do something nice with that. Um, let's jump on down. So I'm, I'm pretty much happy and done with this run. Uh, it, obviously, this run could go and extend much further than it has, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in on the boss room. Kill Skoed. And then we'll we'll see where we're at. So I'm hoping the melee damage from this is enough to kill him. <laughs> He's, he did struggle a little bit there. He, he got to live for a little while. All right, what do we have? So this is like the dream wand, right? This it doesn't get much better than that. It's 4,400. Let's let's jump back up for a second, so we can purchase the the greatest wand of all time, and then we'll make a funny kill wand and win the game back up here note note that there is some hubris going on here um this is not a good idea but you know it's, it's fun no it's just more about fun than it is about winning and uh i i definitely live by that i would i would happily die looking cool than win looking lame all right so let's go ahead and grab this wand here. Well, for, first off, let's grab this, and I'll, I'll just toss this on the ground because it's really the least important wand. And at this point, I'm just going to try and make something that blows up the entire screen really cool, and summon tentacle is a good way of doing that. Let's go ahead and dump a bunch of this. Copy trail is cool. Spiral shot is great for lag. If, you, if you're looking to make a bunch of lag, copy trail is amazing. And obviously, we're, we're looking to make some lag, that's for sure. Spell, we're, we're going to keep this configuration at the back end of that wand. And um, this thing adds 0.67 cast delay, so we're going to have to deal with the cast delay regardless. Uh, one thing that I can do, uh, making the wand a little... You know, I don't need to shoot this fast. This is going to be a shoot once wand, not a shoot fast wand. That's something that uh, needs to be noted. Put freeze charge back here. Thunder charge can go on there. Quadcast can go here. And we'll, we'll start to do the math on how much space we've got to work with. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. That would be pretty funny. That would be very funny. I can I can see the funniness of this. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and count our, our multicast. And try to get everything in order. Black hole would be cool to have on there, but we'll, we'll see if it fits. So the way I'd like to count these as in blocks so i go one two and then this is three so one one two three and then one this is a modifier so we want this over here that way it, it, do you, note that these can be anywhere on the wand like this could be right here and it'll still work exactly the same 
It's just way easier to read. And uh, that's the main reason you'll see people do it. As long as the thing is in this, the casting block, it'll work the way you want it to. Unless it's like a very order-specific spell, like copy random spells thrice. Um, yeah, that's a whole thing. So, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. This is one, two, three, four. And then these draw. And that's all good. So the tentacle timer is going to cast all of this in the casting block. And um, this is going to break my game. The chances that I don't crash from this are probably very, very close to zero. But if it doesn't crash, that would be pretty cool. Think about it. Think about it, Noita. You can do it. I believe in you. I don't really care about any of these. Revenge Explosion could save me from lava if I lag so hard that I can't move anymore and that I fall into the lava, which is something that has happened many times before. <laughs> Now that I say that out loud, maybe I should put some freeze charge down. That's an idea. You know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put some freeze charge. I'm going to take the freeze charge off of here, and I'm going to put it on there. There we go. So that, that might keep me a little bit safer. Let's uh, jump down here and uh, just just line up some, some of this. So that way, if I do fall, you know, maybe I'll be okay. There's, there's a chance I'll be all right. <laughs> it's, it's not likely, but... Let's uh, let's see how this goes. Good luck, us. Okay. Got this all set up. Ambrosia means that I don't really have to deal with them. If he summons his dudes, then my Ambrosia will start to wash off, and that's a whole thing. Here we go. Alright. Um, looks like we got him. I'm gonna say that we got him, yeah. That actually wasn't that bad. GG. Alright. And that's how you play Noita, I guess. Or at least that's how I play Noita. I hope this helped someone. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and you want to see more, subscribe. Say something about it in the comments. That sort of thing. It, it helps a lot. And it gives me a little bit of direction. Also, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Fury Forged for just yelling at me and well he didn't yell at me but like he 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 messaged me on discord and he's like hey do wand content people need this and i'm like yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense so yeah thank you fury and uh yeah thank you all very much for watching Boop.